the first sentence here. I hope you have it. The Etruscans, as everyone knows, were the people who occupied the middle of Italy in early Roman days and whom the Romans, in their usual neighborly fashion, wiped out entirely in order to make room for Rome in a very big arc. That's a really great sentence. But look, they couldn't have wiped them all out. There were too many of them. But they did wipe out the Etruscan existence as a nation and a people. However, this seems to be the inevitable result of expansion with a big E, which is the sole raison d'etre. Raison d'etre means reason for being, French, which is the sole raison d'etre of people like the Romans. So does he like the Romans? No, he despises the Romans. And what's their sole raison d'etre? Expansion with a very big E. Okay. Now, this was written uh, in the 1920s, um, around the time that Hitler is rising in Germany and Mussolini is rising in Italy. And he refers to these uh, coming fascist sort of groups in this book occasionally. And he calls them fascist police louts. He hates them. And there's nothing, you see, these people, uh, Nietzsche, Lawrence, these are nothing fascist in these people. They're just bohemian, highly sensitive artist minded types, and they think that the artist joins too should uh, create the meaning, as Joyce puts it in uh, uh, Portrait of the Artist of Young Man, if you've read that book, James Joyce, great book, read it if you have a chance. You know, I want to create the uncreated conscience of my race, meaning the Irish race. Uh, that's what his task in life is to do, to create the uncreated conscience of his people. It's totally Nietzschean, uh, what he's trying to do in Portrait of the Artist of, as a Young Man, and in Ulysses, if you've read it, I don't like Ulysses as a book, but Portrait of the Artist is approachable, is a book you can read, and is really um, a really interesting book of that genre and a great work of literature. Now, what we know, nothing, we know nothing about the Etruscans except what we find in the tombs. Now, I was telling you about visiting things in Italy. After you get tired of going to all the museums and all the churches, which begin, basically start to repeat themselves, they're, you know, the same statues, same everything, until you get kind of sick of them. Same in France. Uh, then you might go to some other interesting places too. And uh, one of those places to go is the Etruscan places. Do go if you have a chance. I said I didn't go when I was your age. When I could have done, because I was still on the tourist circuit and didn't know that such things existed. No one told me about them. I hadn't read this book. But he starts off here in a place called Chivetteri, perhaps. Chervateri, I think it's Chervateri, but I just call it Chervateri. It's easier to off my lips. Uh, 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 excuse me if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, I like it better like that. Uh, anyway, C-E in Italian is ch. It's not s. In case you uh, are wondering why you say ch. Uh, in Chervateri or Chervateri, there are these mounds. Now, I used to assign this book here. Some of you have it. You have it, don't you? This is a great one because it has actual the pictures in it. Whereas the, for some reason, they stopped printing this book. So I don't know how many have this book, and how many just have a little big fat collected uh, DH Lawrence. How many have this book? Does ever, everybody have have this book? Oh well, you're lucky because you've got the pictures. Because some of uh, I didn't know it was still in print. Obviously, it's been reprinted, and that's really a good thing. Because if you want to see the mounds, you can open up there to those pages there. And it's a very bad photo. But I've been to those places. It's on the coast outside of Rome. In fact, you can go up on the highway to the coast, and pretty soon you see just what he's seeing in this book here, Lattice Poli, L-A-D-I-S-P-L-O-I. -I, and he talks about that. That's the train station I think he goes to where he has to walk from to see these places. Now you just drive your car or so. And there are these, um, as he said, the only thing the Etruscans left were tombs. Because everything above ground was made of wood and stuff like that, and it evaporated. But everything below ground, or the tombs, were made out of stone, and they remain. So not only do you have these uh, what he calls them as tumuli. You see the tumuli here? These are very old pictures. And then you see the inside of the tumuli here in, in, in your book and so on. 
Um, I don't. I um, this book I got at some point in Italy when they were printing it there, and I got a lot of old pictures in here. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I don't know if I have better pictures of the tomb than you do. Which I do. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's a great picture of the tomb line. It's a big round mound with the grass and stuff growing around it and trees. And uh, today, I've been there, and there's even more trees growing around in these sort of sacred spots. It's more um, grown up with, vegeta uh, with vegetation. And he says it's really good for the soul to be in these places. Well, if you stand in that place, and very few tourists go there, occasionally a tourist bus comes and inundates the place, and they will run and leave. But uh, if you go there by yourself, I mean, you feel a quiet stillness there that is really quite indescribable. So I think he's quite right about the effect of these places. So now that I've told you about them, if you go to Rome, you uh, make your tourist guide or your rented car or whatever you do, take you out to uh, this place, Chivetri, that no one will go to, and you won't be sorry. Uh, because it's uh, well worth, uh, it's certainly better than going to some of the churches you're going to see, that's for sure. And then further up the road, um, maybe 50 miles further north, getting towards more into Tuscany, you come to this place called Tarquina. Uh, T-A-R-Q-U-I-N-A. Uh, most of his book is, uh, I think it's maybe an I-A or just A. The Painted Tombs of Tarquinia, yeah, I am. Which is another town about, as I said, 50 miles further north from Chivetri. And he spends most of the book talking about those tombs. And in your book, fortunately, and I've got more pictures in this book here, but you actually, lucky as you are, for this book, you know the pictures of Rappi, you've got pictures of the tomb that he's describing. You can't tell much from these pictures because they're so ugly in these pictures in terms of the photography. But those tomb paintings are still there. Unfortunately, now, because of his books and others, in his day, nobody even went to visit them all. He said you could smell them there was urine and, you know, cat cat root urine and stuff or whatever. Uh, nowadays, they've got lights that go on. They're shielded behind bulletproof glass. 